What's up everyone? So I always get questions on my YouTube channel about how to do certain things. I know previously we went over cameras, we went over how to drone, we went over how to make a lot of other different production materials. So today I have a really awesome person with me today, Nadine. She's from Hey Nadine. Would you tell everybody who you are and what you do? Hello, so my name is Nadine Sakura. You know me as Hey Nadine. Um, that's kind of like my YouTube channel name and I'm a travel blogger, travel YouTuber. Very modest, but the fact is I that she's one of the top travel YouTubers on on YouTube, so check her out. She's really awesome. Well, today, uh, the reason that I brought her along and she was nice enough to say yes, I don't know why, is because she has an awesome travel channel and I'm hoping that she will share some of her little secrets on how to run a successful travel channel. What are the things that you do to make sure that your channel runs right? There are a couple things that you need to do. Is One, you need to have good content. You, good I mean, content. that's kind of the, the, the glue that holds everything together. If you don't post good content that people are engaged with, that people want to watch, that people find entertaining of some sort or educational some sort, then you have nothing to build anything upon. I highly recommend experimenting, finding your style, like don't be afraid to just go out there and film something even if it's not going to be perfect, just to kind of figure out what works for you, how comfortable if you're going to vlog, how comfortable you feel on camera. Experiment, perfect. Try to get some sort of story, some sort of cohesion. Step number one. The next step is obviously building up your channel in and of itself. So once you've kind of gotten the videos and how you want to work on the videos, you want to start building your actual channel and how that's going to kind of go about. So then you look kind of at more at the overall picture instead of each individual video. What you want to portray into the world. So you can do motorcycles, are you going to do adventure, are you going to do action, are you going to do like food, are you going to do this? And you can kind of start figuring out how you want to lay out your channel, what kind of information, so when someone stumbles upon you, they have an idea of what you're all about and what they can expect from you. So my experience with that one is actually, as you see my channel, I have things from drones, I got things from selfies, I got things from tutorials, I got things of reviews. So you can diversify, but as you see, if you kind of hone in on your topic and your category, you'll be a lot more successful with uh, your channel than uh, I've been, just like Nadine, which has managed to do that. Because on mine, you'll find so many different things, it's kind of hard to you know tell you what I'm all about since I do so many different fun things. Yeah, it's important to start small, like find a niche. There is so much value in niche because YouTube is huge now. Um, there is so much content out there so and much. it's very easy to get your stuff lost in the mix. So, so my thing is find if you're just starting out and you're trying to build a, a travel channel or any other kind of um, channel, find a niche, find something that you really enjoy, you want to create content around and you're like, I'm going to become the expert in this niche. It could be motorcycles, it could be any type, it could be solo female travel. Find that niche hone in on that niche and become the expert on that and then start branching off and start building other things around it because if you if you get so niched into something you can start getting your videos yeah. as a top viewed videos for that category. Find what you're most passionate about because you'll be doing this for a long time if you really want to try to make it successful so do something you enjoy because you don't want to do something you don't like for a long time. Yep. On average, on average people starting out you're looking at about, I mean, minimum six months. Minimum six months if you get lucky, if you really go full in, um, you get some good videos that get tractions that go viral. Most people take at least a year to, to really develop that, especially when you're doing travel because it takes so long to just build the content because you actually have to travel, you have to film these destinations. Would you agree that editing and making this whole channel experience happen, it takes the majority of your time rather than the traveling and the experience itself? Or are you kind of half and half? Um, Think about that. For me, at least, I spend a lot of my time preparing and figuring out kind of fun, unique things to do with the film, edit, post, and then do the whole production. So I spend a lot of time doing that. So I probably do half and half, but a little more production and, and preparing than actually traveling at this point. Yeah. But it, um, was, it wasn't like that before at the very beginning. If you check out her videos at the very beginning, you check out my videos at the very beginning, <laughs> you're gonna start seeing a trend here with everybody who starts this out is that it starts off pretty rough. And it starts then, off pretty rough. And then it gets a little better. So yeah. don't be deterred by that. No. Um, I definitely think that starting out, it's heavily, more heavily on the travel aspect of it. Once you get to a certain level, I mean, like I do this full time and there's a lot more involved behind the scenes as soon as you, especially if you want to start working on bigger productions, let's like bigger video shoots. 
video is becoming a lot more regulated so there's a lot more rules as you know with all the drones there's a lot more rules there's a lot more permissions needed there's a lot more different types of shots require different types of equipment you want to have bigger ideas you want to have better videos they just take more time to plan not even to mention the travel aspect so right. like when I know when I just started it was much more heavily on the travel than the actual like production side and if you are just starting out with video and filmmaking I recommend get and you de haven't done much travel at all definitely get your travel perfected like you need to actually like you have so to know do, what do doing. both yeah. at the same time and I've worked with many people that want to do travel filmmaking they want to do travel vlogging but really they just want to travel or really they just want to do okay. filmmaking or vlogging but they don't really want to travel so you have to be able to do both of them or else it's not going to work with travel filmmaking specifically right and you'll figure out when you start doing this this may not be for you one thing might lead to another and you might change completely because you remember my videos i used to post silly stuff and now I figured out that this is kind of a little better and a little more uh, catered. So anyway, check I out the- I post a lot of goofy stuff too. <laughs> so like, it's pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. So check out the examples and you'll kind of figure out what, what to do and what yeah. not to do. The question I always get from people, Nadine, is the camera gear. People think that their entire trip and their entire, entire presence in what they're doing requires a certain specific amount of tools to use to make this happen. How do you feel about that? Um, so I went to China and I filmed an entire video of great, the Great Wall of China. Beautiful, one of the most beautiful destinations. I filmed it all on a phone. See? And it was an amazing video. So like, that's... you can literally check it and watch that video and be, you wouldn't even tell it it's a phone. Equipment plays a very important part, but also storytelling and how you film and what you want sure. to showcase. So if you're yeah. thinking, man, I get a lot of views on my video, it's not always about the views, because remember, the most viewed videos on the internet are not professional crazy They're like productions. Videos. They're like cat videos <laughs> like and cat videos. women wearing masks of a certain movie yeah. and just, uh, you know, it doesn't, the camera doesn't matter. Although we're right now we're on a ca Canon 80D and we're on a Canon uh, G7X over here. I've used the GoPro, I've used everything else. Yeah. And even those videos have gotten a lot more views than the ones I'm using now. So yeah, well, we all have a phone in our pocket. Definitely. Make the story matter. And you know what? The quality is going to be viewed on your cell phone anyway. You know, the majority of you guys are watching this on a cell phone. That's 50% of you guys. So that's a statistic for at least my channel. No, it's no, it's actually, it's a very, it's a big statistic around statistic around most channels. Yeah. Gear helps you tell different stories and tell the same story you want to tell, but better. They're just tools used to be able to get, like allow you to be a little bit more creative. I also right. just carrying around very expensive toys, essentially. So unless you know how to use each gear to your benefits, like know how it's gonna benefit you and how it's gonna progress your story and how it's gonna make your videos better, there's no point in bringing it. Right. Yeah. yeah, so obviously unless you wanna have really a buff body <laughs> carrying around these heavy things all the time, it's, it's a bit of a nuisance. So again, the camera gear does not matter. Just remember, if you don't know how to edit, you don't know how to do anything, I know that we do this when we're thinking, when we're filming stuff on the channels, is you either shoot the edit or you shoot the show. Shoot the edit means that you shoot something thinking how you're gonna edit it along the way. Mm -hmm. Shoot the show is what a news anchor does, which is basically runs and guns and basically creates a story on one simple recording. So if all this is very overwhelming to you, realize that there's a lot of different styles to do things, so find out what works best for you. Now, if you don't know how to do any of this, remember the way most of us have started out, yeah, I think they deem also, is if you don't know how to do it, you YouTube it, Google it. There's so many videos on learning how to do these things and there's an excess amount of information out there. So no excuse not to start. Okay, so let me now, let me take you to the last question here is gonna be how do you maintain a travel channel? I have a schedule of two videos a week. Realistically, it's like one every six days. It's hard as a traveler to one, be filming, you're out filming all day and I always prioritize the filming pretty much in most cases than the editing because I can always edit later, but if I'm not out filming while I have this short period of time, the destination, I have nothing to edit. I have nothing to, I to show for it afterwards. So I'll always be out there running about all day and then I come home and I'm exhausted. That's just the reality of travel. It's one of the right. struggles as a travel filmmaker and, travel and a vlogger that you have to deal with versus other types of filming styles. Um, Remember, it's not easy and if it was easy, everybody would be doing yeah. it. YouTube favors daily. They've said this before. 
Um, it's just how the algorithm works. The more your videos are presented, the more people click on it, the more they're gonna recommend. And, and the more ads are gonna run. And the more ads are gonna run. So the more frequently you post, the more percent, the higher percentage of your total subscribers are gonna at least watch one of your videos and then another one will be recommended. Daily is the best, but it's really unrealistic. And if you ask every, if you ask every single major daily vlogger, they will all tell you don't do daily because it is so, so, so tough. It'll suck the so life out of you. So exhausting. Being on the road constantly, if, if that's what you perceive your channel to do daily, to right. be on the road, then as soon as you're not on the road because you're exhausted or you don't have, the, or you run out of funds, right. your channel's gonna suffer and your audience, what they were expecting back then is not what they're gonna get now. So, so, so here's a good comparison for you. Nadine posts very daily stuff and it takes her a few days to a few weeks to do something. On my end, remember, it worked for me for a long time of taking six months to produce one video that take three months to produce one video even taking three years to produce that one video that I made so if sustainability works for you or if like you just want to take it easy and have chunks of things that you do there's no wrong way to do this so don't feel like you gotta go daily you gotta go weekly if you got to start six months twice a year whatever it is like I did that's what you got to do so there's yeah. no wrong way to do it just figure out if it's right for you I think the biggest thing is just quality yeah I'm always quality over quantity so. so how do you uh, do your maintenance on social? I have no schedule for it. I mean, you use your social to kind of promote your YouTube and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. See, at least what I do is I post one time daily on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I really don't use Twitter. You know, you don't have to use every single platform. I know people that we just met do nothing but Snapchat and they're doing fine on their travel stuff. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, at least I like to post once uh, throughout the social platforms and then obviously weekly or if not monthly on yeah. YouTube. So Instagram, I post a lot on Instagram. Okay, so. yeah, so everybody's different. Nobody does this exactly the same. Your top, what are your top three tips to give people back home? Just get started and experiment. I mean, you have to find what you're passionate for before everything and everything else will kind of fall into the, the wayside afterwards. Do you have anybody help you with what you do? Yes, sometimes it's complicated. Okay, so um, it's a complicated situation. On my end, <laughs> I kind of do everything myself, which is why things take a lot longer. And I think once you start having help, you move from posting monthly to then help being able to post uh, bi-weekly. Awesome. So anyway, check out Nadine. I'll put her channel Thanks. information below in the description. Check her out, really cool stuff, especially for you women travelers. She has a lot of stuff that pertains to that, which is awesome. And if not, if you just love traveling in general, a lot of cool stuff as well. Uh, she puts me to shame, uh, basically. So no. check her out. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.